Lord, happy Wednesday night of Easter week. We're glad you're here in the house of the Lord. Let's all stand and let's welcome the presence of the Lord into the service tonight. He's done great, great things in our services. We believe tonight he's going to do some awesome things. Let's invite him into this house. Father, we thank you tonight for Wednesday night church. We thank you that we can gather together with expectation. Believe in God. You're going to move tonight in this service, God, Lord, in every classroom, Lord, on every teacher tonight, God, on every person that's here. I pray, God, you pour your spirit out, God. Uh, we know it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. So have your way tonight in this room. Do miracles and healings tonight, God. Bring somebody to the Father this week, Lord, in these services. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise for what you do, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord tonight.
say something really quick. Um, in chapel today, we were singing about praise. Um, and I was just kind of meditating on it and thinking about it. And I was thinking about how much praise is a privilege to us. <laughs> praise is a privilege. And when you think about it, when you think of just all that Christ has done, um, I've been doing a study recently just on Holy Week and everything. And just, I read last night, just everything that Christ endured on the cross, all the physical pain, all the mental and emotional pain that he suffered, just so that I could stand here today and just live. And it's amazing, it's wonderful. So as we go into this bridge, I just, I ask that you would just praise him with the praise that he is worthy of. The King of all kings, the one who redeemed me when I was unredeemable, the one who saved me when I was long lost. Don't hold back because praising is a privilege. Standing here is a privilege. Just being able to speak his name is a privilege. He is holy and I am unworthy. So as we sing, I pray God that you would just worship with me, worship with the praise that he is worthy of. So come on my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. Oh come on my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you've got
this song on there kind of was on my heart I got a phone call about an hour and a half later from a man and he said I want you to preach a funeral for me I said okay he says my father he's very sick with cancer it could be any time I said is he ready to meet the Lord and he said well he was baptized once years ago but he really had not very religious questionable well questionable is not good for me I believe we can have a no so salvation and I said well let me visit him first I looked at my schedule. I said, I got Friday morning open. I'll be there. Where does he live? He lives up here in Kettering. I said, I'll be there. Meet me at 10 o'clock. He said, I can do that. I said, well, let's go up. Let's make sure he's right with God. I like preaching funerals of people that know, that know, that know, that know. And so this verse, death seems so nigh. We're going to call on the master to really make sure that man knows that he knows that his name is written in heaven. His sins are forgiven. And his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And I believe in God's going to help us this week when we do that. We've got some wonderful testimonies already of what God's done this last week. And uh, we have some, just some good things that are happening in store this weekend. And I say good things. We've got Easter egg hunts, but we've got people uh, texting and saying, Hey, I think my family member's coming to church. And they want to be here on Easter Sunday morning. And uh, we're believing God is going to bring in the harvest. Is going to bring in the harvest. Man, it's exciting. Just a wonderful time of year, isn't it? To thank the Lord that you're saved. Just to think about what He's done for you. To think that you got a home in heaven. 
how good it is to serve the Lord tonight. Let's sing one more chorus of that, and then we'll dismiss you. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? When the very same Jesus he is always so near. He lives in my heart, and He hears when I cry. I'm going to call on Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Uh, thank God. Has God been good to you tonight, church? He's been so good. I cannot tell it all. Praise God. Young people, you can go to your classes tonight. Thank you. God bless you, teachers. We pray God's anointing on you as you teach. Ushers, if you'll come, we'll receive tonight's tithing offering. So we want the ushers to come tonight. And let's bless tonight. Let's give to the Lord. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over. We're excited. We'll have a poster out here very soon of a picture of the new uh, construction bill that we're going to be doing here very shortly so you can see it and have a view of, of the new sanctuary we're building and all the extra classrooms that are so desperately needed. These kids are fitting into classrooms that hold 12 to 14 kids, and there's sometimes 25 back there. Sometimes there's uh, more than that, and they're all just squeezing in, being good sports. So let's give and believe and uh, believe God's going to give the increase. Amen. And we're going to see this uh, building come to fruition in the next year. We're going to see. I, I want to break ground as soon as we can do it. We got bad news from a, uh, some contractors this week came out, evaluated the property, said, well, your sewage line ain't up to par. Your electric's not up to par. Your water, you're going to need to sprinkle the whole system, the whole current system, so it'll be over 20,000 square foot. So you need a bigger line. And our recommendation is to sell it and find another property. <laughs> and I said, hold on, devil, not that quick. We can run all those utilities. We can get the water and the electric and everything we need upgraded to, to facilitate the building. And so Derek, he said, I'm prefacing this with don't be discouraged, Pastor. I said, I'm not. So it's going to cost us hundreds and thousands of more than even we anticipated with all the utilities we need to run. But I'm not looking at man. Man, I'm looking at what God's going to do. I'm looking at what he's going to do. And I believe he's going to help us with that and put the right people in the right place. And then we're going to take that step of faith and begin to do it. We've already got a wonderful start, wonderful start on saving for this building. And we believe God's going to take care of it as we go forward. But earlier in the year, the Lord says it's time to move forward. And I see that now. It just keeps increasing. And uh, believe it or not, these are wonderful problems to have. So we thank God for the souls being saved, the increase. And so um, we just thank God that uh, he's, he's blessed us. And uh, we're going to see this thing come to fruition. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the people. Thank you, that, Lord, the report we got earlier this week from the contractors uh, that told us all these things, the things we already kind of knew that we needed more of an upgrade. But, Lord, you're, you own a cattle on a thousand hill. And so we're just going to believe your promises are for us and that you're going to provide everything that we need to see this building come to pass, Lord. Thank you for the heart of the people to give. Bless them, God, as they give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I searched the world But well, it couldn't fill me But well, man's empty praise Treasures that fade But never know you came along You put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied
told brother kelly on saturday or sunday or saturday when i said get ready because my vocals allergy season comes and i said i may try to go all day sunday and i was able to i said if not get ready to go wednesday night and uh, he's going to preach tonight he's a blessing and uh i know you'll you'll be blessed by it i was playing church with my daughter last night and uh that's what you do you play church when she had the little duckies set out and the animals set out and we worship the lord and you get the animals and then they get a blessing and they start shouting <laughs> Then you sit them down for the preaching. And I said, uh, I said, Stella, it's time. The little animals sit down and they listen. And she said, you listen to the preaching. And if you don't, Jesus won't like you. So, so I want you to pay attention to the preaching tonight or Jesus won't like you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's what she said. Brother Kelly, come and uh, preach tonight. Share what's on your heart. Amen. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Be praying the Lord does some great things here on Sunday as well. We believe he's going to, so just praying with us that God has his way. Amen. Come, brother. I like, I like Stella's uh, philosophy. Amen. <laughs> That's all right. I, Pastor EJ was talking about that, and I, my mind went back to when I was a child. I remember the, a lot of people that still in the, in the church here tonight remember Aquanet hairspray, right? That was my microphone. I used an Aquanet hairspray can for a microphone as a little boy and preached all over the house. You can ask my mom and dad. Amen. And, uh, but I'm glad of my heritage. Amen. 
Glad I know what I know in the Lord, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity tonight. Never want to take it for granted. And uh, I'm glad that I know that I can say within my own heart from a, from a testimony that I have, as Brother Jay was just singing, that nothing compares to him. Aren't you glad of that tonight? It's, it's, it's vitally important that we can say that for ourselves. I can stand here tonight and preach to him about you. Pastor can preach. Pastor Bill can preach. Any of us preachers can share that with you, or anyone can share that with you. But until you experience it for yourself, your life will never be the same. Amen. He will never, your life will never be the same. When, once, we have that, once we have that run in with him, I'm glad of that. He turns our life around, aren't you? Amen. We don't have to be what, uh, what the enemy always said we would be or what even people said we be, would be. Sometimes people can be hurtful, right? And they just, they put things into our mind and, and we deal with those things. I talked to a young man this week that just had a lot of things in his mind that I had no idea. Quite, quite honestly, it shocked me. But we never know uh, what's going on in somebody's mind and what they're thinking and what the devil's telling them. And I told this young man, I said, the first thing you got to do, and, and he done this, he realized, he said, I know it's the enemy. That's key right there. Amen. Not only do we, are we supposed to recognize the voice of God as, as people that are living for him, it's just as important to realize when the enemy comes around and when he starts talking. And I told that young man this week, I said, that's why the scriptures tell us, give no place to the devil. As soon as he comes in and starts talking, Brother Ed, we should run him off. Get out of here. You don't, you don't belong here. You don't live here. You have no residence here. You don't belong in my home, my life, my family's life, right? Amen. And the Bible tells us if we'll do that, he has to go. Amen. If we speak the name of Jesus, he has to go. I'm glad that, I'm glad that I know that tonight, aren't you? Let's go to Acts chapter number 9. Amen. Acts chapter number 9. just want to share with you what's, what the Lord's laid on my heart. And uh, I... I Looked at a couple of different things and uh, could not get away from this. So this must be where the Lord wants us tonight. So appreciate the opportunity, Pastor. It's always a privilege, amen, to, to share the word of the Lord. I love, love sharing the word of the Lord. Amen. It's, it's life, isn't it? It is life. Acts chapter 9, verse number 32. Acts 9 and 32. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Leda. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of palsy. Sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make up thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Leda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. I want you to notice that. Amen. Our lives are a testimony. Can you say amen? All that saw this happen turned to the Lord. So this is one story, but I want to go on and read another story here that the Bible shares with us and just kind of come back and talk about both of them. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which being interpreted is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Who, when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. And forasmuch as Leda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him to the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing him the coats and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turned him to the body and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all of Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a Tanner. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we need your help tonight. Lord, just share this the way you've shared it with me. God, I just want it tonight to be seasoned by your words. 
not mine, Lord. Just use me as a, as a mouthpiece to share what you've laid on my heart, to touch somebody tonight. Strengthen us, encourage us, move in this altar tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes here tonight about rising above your situation. Amen. Rising above your situation. The word arise means simply to move up, upward, or ascend. To move upward or ascend. And we see in these, in these scriptures here, these stories that we shared with you, uh, speaking Peter here, first he comes to Ananias, and the Bible tells us in verse 32 through 35 that he came and he, he runs into Ananias, and Ananias has been on this sickbed for eight years, and he was sick with palsy. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. I like how Peter made sure, Brother Matt, that, that Ananias knew, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith, but Jesus is the one that heals, right? God is the only person, the only one that can heal on, on this planet. Can you say amen? God uses mankind. He uses us, us in our faith to pray for the sick and afflicted. And as pastor has shared, we've seen God move in great ways just here recently in this church. And we are blessed to see the things that we've seen. Amen. We are blessed. I never want to take it for granted when I see what God is doing and what God, how God is touching, how God is moving. Amen. I was so happy today to see some of, the, some of the great praise reports we received today. I want to take every praise report we get and grab a hold of it and say, God, I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Brother, Brother Scott's dad being able to drink some of, that, some of that protein that they were trying to get into him. Amen. That's, that, that takes God. Can you say amen? And, and the healing comes from the Lord. And, and Peter says to him, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make up thy bed. And he arose immediately and he dwelt there. And then, we, then I also read the story to you of Dorcas, or, or Tabitha is her name, also called Dorcas. This is a woman that was known for the, for the good things that she done. She was a blessing to many. The Bible says she was a disciple. That's what we just read here. She was a disciple of the Lord, and, and she's done many great things. And we see that they go after Peter, and they say, Peter, you've got to come pray for her. You've got to come pray for her. She, is, she has died. She's passed away. And, and the Bible says that, that he comes with them, and he arrives there. And he went into the room where she was in. They brought him to the upper chamber, and and the Bible says all the, all the widows, I've just kind of been picturing this in my mind for the last several days, they're, they're standing around and I can see them making, holding all these garments. And all these garments are, are a testimony of, of what a great woman she is and, and the good deeds that she done for the town and how she was a, how she was a help and how she, uh, how she treated people as a Christian should treat people, right? She was doing things right and, and, and living right and doing everything that she needed to do right. And the Bible said that they're, they're showing him the coats and the garments. Look at this, Peter. Look at all these things that she has done. And the Bible said in verse 40 that Peter went in with them, and he, he put them all out, and he put them all forth, and he knelt down and prayed. Aren't you glad tonight for the power in prayer? Amen. I'm glad that when, when everybody else says no, I can take it to the Lord and, and say, let me pray about it, and he can say yes when everybody else says no. Amen. God has the final say tonight, doesn't he? And the Bible said that Peter put them all forth, and he knelt down and prayed. And turning him to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. Amen. Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. What I want us to notice in these, both of these stories right here, and I, I, I want to preach, as I said here for a little bit, on rising above your situation. Both of these people, Ananias and Tabitha, are in situations, they're in circumstances where if one would look on them, if I would look on that situation, if I would look on that circumstance, if you were to look at it, we would all come to the same opinion that Ananias, his, his situation seems hopeless, right? He is lame, he's been this way for eight years, he's been on this bed of affliction, Brother Andy, and that's just, that's just what it is. Uh, sometimes in our life, things come our way and... And, and, and people have the uh, have the, uh, the they're under the assumption is well this is just a, this is just how it's going to be brother Tim I'm always going to live with this this is always going to be this way I'm always going to be in this situation always going to be in this circumstance and, and 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 Tabitha they're both in a bad situation Tabitha's even worse she's dead the Bible said she is dead 
when Peter arrives and he walks in. And so both of these, both of these people in this story here, their, their situations seem hopeless. Ananias is a lame man. He's crippled. He can't, can't do things for himself. He's got to rely on somebody. And Tabitha has passed away. She is dead. There is absolutely nothing that anyone can do for her. They have taken care of her. They've put her away. they put her in the upper chamber. Amen. And they can't do anything for themselves. And I, and I don't know about you here tonight, but I serve, a, uh, I serve a God, and I know you do too. And I thought of this one. When Pastor was talking a little bit ago about some of the news he got this week, I was sitting over there and, and there was a lot of parables that started going through my mind, Pastor. Amen. I know that, that some of the news might have come in that wasn't exactly what we wanted, but I serve a God, as he said, that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I serve a Savior that took five loaves and two fishes and fed over 5,000 men and women and children, and when they got done, they had more to take home. They had more leftovers than they did to begin with. That's because I serve a God that the Bible says is nothing impossible for him. Can you say amen? There is nothing impossible for our God. And I've come here tonight to preach to you and tell you, amen, I didn't know who would be in this building here tonight, but I believe that the Lord wanted me to share this with you tonight. We serve a God that no matter how hopeless your situation may seem, amen, Tabitha's situation could not get any more hopeless. Ananias, in his own mind, he would say, this situation could not get any. I don't know what else could happen to me. Amen. But little did they both know that there was a man of God. Amen. That was coming down the road. Amen. And he said, oh, let me tell you something. It's not about me. It's not about what I've got to say. It's not about what I've got to do. Amen. But brother Ben, I've got a God that I serve. Amen. Let me tell you about the man that has come. Amen. He's went to the cross and he buried, he died, he buried. Amen. And he was resurrected. And because he rose, amen, we can rise also. Can you say amen? I serve a God that said, hey, I don't worry about your situation. I don't worry about your circumstances. If we will just turn it over to him tonight, amen, God can rise us above. He wants to rise you above the situation that you're in tonight. Remember here tonight that nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing is impossible with our God. Amen. I've had the devil tell me over and over and over in my ministry, and I know I've shared this here before, but it's on my heart again tonight. I've prayed about people. Amen. If the enemy said, you might as well never pray for them. Their lives are a wreck. Their lives are in sin. They're so far gone from God. Amen. That they are hopeless. But I go back to the devil and say, listen here. Amen. God, when he sent his son to the cross, pastor, amen, just for those kind of people right there. Amen. The more broken they are, the more busted they are, the more hopeless they seem, the more erect their life seems to be. I believe the better God likes it. Amen. Because when he gets a hold of them and says, hey, I don't matter what situation. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're in because when God gets a hold of us, he can bring us up out of that with his mighty right hand, as he says in Psalms. In Psalms, he says, I will uphold you with my mighty right hand. Amen. Amen. It is very easy, though, for us sometimes, and I know this isn't a new message here tonight, but this is what Lord laid on my heart. It's very easy for us to get wrapped up in our situation and our circumstances. But I've always found this, and, and this rings true to me, and it's a little bit of a personal testimony this week. Uh, Monday night, we, we, uh, we, we had something happen at our house that, that, that kind of caught us off guard, and and, and, and Aiden come to us and he said, Mom and Dad, I want to talk to you. And I'm not going to share all the details tonight. But he said, Mom and Dad, I want to talk to you. And we, we talked for a long time. And there were some things going through his mind and a few things he was struggling with. And, and I could tell it was really bothering him, Brother Ed. He was struggling. And, and, it, and it, it caught us off guard a little bit. Amen. But he got about halfway through his conversation and we're talking. And, and I'm trying to give him encouraging words. And I'm trying to give him the word. And, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just stopped right into our living room and said, you know what the best thing you could do right now? Amen. Just stop and go to prayer. Amen. I can talk until I turn blue in the face. Amen. But we went up. I said, let's go up to your bedroom. We went to his bedroom. Pastor Bill, we got down beside his bed. Amen. And we prayed for just a little bit. And guess who showed up? That same man. Amen. That rose Ananias. That same man that Greg told Tabitha, hey, get up out of that situation. We prayed for 10 or 15 minutes. I looked over at Aid and I said, how do you feel about that situation now? Amen. He said, a hundred percent better dad and it's nothing that we do but we go back to our God we go 
back to our Savior and know that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, let us be reminded here tonight, God knew about it long before you did. He knew it was coming before you ever did. So the best thing we can do is just trust in Him. The best thing we can do when we've done all we know to do, prayer never fails. My mind went back. I was thinking about this this past weekend. I, t- I, told, I told Pastor yesterday in a text message, I said, I almost came apart. I'm Pentecostal all the way to the every fiber of my being. And I about come apart here Sunday when Reese went running around this building. I thought, if that ain't a smack in the devil's face, I don't know what is. Hey, man, you talk about a blessing. But I remembered as she was doing that, and, and I was praying about this, and I was thinking the last few days that the day that the accident happened, and I know, I know we've talked about it a lot, and it's their story. Amen. But I can remember getting down to Children's Hospital that day, and I thought about this last night. And... Uh, and, and what a situation they were in, right? And, and I, I got there. I've told the story before. I'm not going to re- rehash it here tonight. You all know how it goes. But I got down to the hospital, and I was the first one there with, with Reese. And I walked in. I, you know, I just went charging up to the counter, and, and I, I said what I was there for. And obviously, I understand how hospitals are. They said, you're not on the list, so you can't go see her. You can just wait here in the waiting room. Amen. And, and, and they sent the, sent the chaplain out to talk to me, the same one that come and talk to pastor later. And she said, is there anything that I I can do while you wait. We'll just wait. Amen. I said, no, but I know what I'm going to do. Amen. I went over in that waiting room, Brother Ed. Amen. I said, you may be stopping me. You may be limiting me. Amen. But I serve a God that's already back there. Amen. So I'm going to walk around in this lobby here tonight. Amen. And I'm going to pray and say, God, you can reach where we can't. Amen. God, you know every situation, what I'm preaching about here tonight. You know every circumstance, God. And you raised her above that. Amen. And did he not ever do that? God grabbed the hold of her. Amen. What a miracle. What a testimony here tonight. Amen. What a God we serve that no matter what comes our way. Amen. If we will just find a place. If we will just bow down before God and say, God, I am limited, Brother Ben, as to what I can do. Amen. I'm a human being. I can say things. I can do this. Amen. But Pastor EJ, there's great power. Amen. When I when we go to our knees and say, God, it is out of my control. Amen. But this situation is in your hands. Amen. And let me tell you something. When God raises you up out of a situation, you'll know it. Amen. There's people in this building here tonight that are testimonies. I'm looking at one up there, a couple down here. Amen. Their testimonies never. Billy Joe, your testimony never gets old to me. Amen. Because no matter how many bad situations have come your way in your life, amen, Ty, I don't want to call names, Ben, several different ones. I'm probably missing somebody. Amen. But you know what? We all find ourselves in situations. And I serve a God that doesn't love me any more than he loves you. He doesn't care about my situation any more or any less than he does you. Amen. And and I was standing down here Sunday and Brother Ben come down. Amen. He started praying over me and I said, God, thank you for this brother. Amen. Thank you for my brother that you took him against all odds. Amen. Against everything that the enemy would say. Amen. I feel the spirit here tonight. If the enemy had his way, Brother Ben, you'd be dead and in a grave somewhere. Amen. I've sent many of them to the morgue in his situation in my lifetime. Amen. But when God gets on the scene, when God gets in the situation, amen, and God says, hey, I'm going to grab a hold of that soul, no matter how deep down it is, I'm going to bring them up out of that situation. And when he tells you to arise, you're going to get up. Amen. When God speaks to your situation and says, hey, you've been in that situation long enough, it's time for you to come up out of it. When God says that, my friend, you're coming out. I've come here tonight to preach to you and say, don't give up too soon. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. You may say, Brother Kelly, I've been in this situation for a long time. God knows. Amen, Brother Kelly, nobody else understands. Nobody understands where I've been. Nobody understands my past. Nobody understands, Brother Matt, my record. God knows. Amen. And the Bible tells he he knows us and still he loves us. There's nothing that we can tell God that he hasn't already taken to the cross and had it taken care of. Amen. But in our lives, sometimes we run into situations that seem hopeless. Amen. But there's one thing that rings true, the same thing that rung true for Ananias and Tabitha that I'm preaching about here tonight. 
They could not get, they could not receive the healing they needed on their own. It takes the Lord. I had a young man reach out to me, and I'm, I'm actually really excited about it. And when I was, when I was pastoring over there, he came and he, he gave his heart to the Lord, and I worked with him in the fire service. He kind of grew up under me. He was younger than me, and he works now down in Cincinnati. He works for Cincinnati Fire Department full time. He's got a great job. And when I, was, when I was over there, he came and gave his heart to the Lord, and he was doing really good. I stayed with him and worked with him, Brother Ed, and tried to encourage him. And he came to me. I noticed him kind of starting to slip away. And, and, he, and he came to me at one time and said, you know, Kelly, I, I've known you about my whole life. I've looked up to you. I respect you for your ministry and the things you do in the church and the things that work, you work for the Lord. And he said, it always seems like to me that you live so good, and I don't think I could ever do it. He said, I just don't think I can live, I don't just don't think I can live good enough. I've do, done too many things. I don't know how you do the things you do. I said, let me stop you right there and let's make a correction. I can't do anything without Christ that lives in me. If Christ takes his hand off of my life, I can't do it either. It's all about him. All the praise and honor and glory belongs to the Savior. Can you say amen? But I said, let me tell you something, young man, and, and actually help me pray about it because he reached out this week and he wants to get together, pastor, and he wants to talk. And he said, the Lord just keeps dealing with me. I need to get in the Bible and I need to know where to read and I want to get my kids into church. They need to be in the house of God. And I said, man, do I know a good one. Amen. Let me know when you can get together. So I'm praying, amen, that God can raise him up out of that situation. It's nothing that I can do. It's nothing that I can say. Amen. But he knows what it's like to have the hand of God make a difference in his life. Amen. And that same thing rings true for us today. We can be in a situation, and I felt this here tonight just to share this with you, that God is, wants to call you out of your situation you're in tonight. Amen. I don't want us to enter the mindset here tonight on a Wednesday night, and many times the enemy says, well, it's just a Wednesday night. We've seen a lot of great things happen here on the last several Wednesday nights. Great healings. Can you say amen? I serve a God who didn't make no difference what, to, what day of the week it is to him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And he wants to call you out. Maybe you're in a situation here tonight. You say, Brother Kelly, amen, if you only understood, if you only knew, as I said a few moments ago, I don't need to because God does. Amen. And God spoke to me to share with you tonight and say, hey, it doesn't matter to him how long you've been in that situation. God is willing and able and wants to bring you out of that tonight. I'm not talking tomorrow or next week or this weekend or next month. God wants to make a change in our lives tonight. Amen. Amen. When God comes by in the house, I want to take advantage of it while he's here. Can you say amen? I want to take advantage of it while he's here. Amen. He's calling us tonight. Amen. He wants us to rise up. Rise up out of this. Whatever state that you're in here tonight. I was praying today at work. I had a little downtime at lunch. Went out to the car and I said, Lord, you know who will be in that building tonight. I don't. And everybody is going through something. Amen. Everyone is in some kind of situation or some kind of circumstance. We all have different things in life going on, different stages of our life. But the good news is here tonight that I came to share that no matter what the situation is in your life, God is still the same. He does not change because of our situations, Brother Tim. He does not change because of our circumstances. He is still God. And when God looks at your situation and says, Tabitha, arise, it's time to come up out of there, right? Because he said, God said it in his word. Amen. Many times throughout the Bible we find, amen, where Jesus, as I was reading and praying about this, I kind of started looking back over, over different parables. And, and many times, pastor, in the Bible, when Jesus would heal people, he would say, rise up. Take up your bed and get up. What's that mean, Brother Kelly? That, that, that kind of struck a chord with me that he's wanting to call you up out of that situation. Right? And I, and I never understood. There's times I read parables in the Bible and said, Jesus, why did you... That, that lame man was, has been in that bed his whole life. Why did you tell him to raise up, take up your bed and walk? Maybe sometimes that bed was a testimony. While he was on his way home, Brother Andy, somebody said, what are you dragging that bed for? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus. 
Amen. Let me tell you about somebody who just rose me up off of this bed. Amen. And this bed is a testimony. I've been in this bed, Brother Tim, my entire life. Amen. But today Jesus said, rise up and walk. Amen. And something just happened and immediately my feet and ankle bones gained strength. Amen. When God causes you to rise above that situation, I'm here to tell you tonight, you will leave that situation with a testimony. The Bible said, I'm closing shortly. Come get a song if you would. The Bible said it with, with Ananias and Tabitha. In verse 34, the Bible said, And Peter said unto Ananias, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. In verse 35 said, And all that dwelt in Lydia and Saren saw him and turned to the Lord. There was salvation here because they saw what Jesus done to him. Amen. Tabitha, the Bible said, and when they saw, when she set up, she opened her eyes and she saw Peter. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows in, he presented her alive. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine, Brother Ed, being there. I'm sitting out here in the hallway and I'm weeping and I'm lamenting. And I'm holding all these garments that she's made and reminiscing on what a great person she was and all the great things she'd done for the community. And when everybody else would say, and they did, they prepared her body and took her to the upper chamber and said, all hope is gone. Amen. I feel the Lord taking this a little bit different direction here tonight. Amen. When everybody else looks in and says, all hope is gone. Amen. Wonder, Brother Ty, how many times the enemy told your mom, you might as well just stop. All hope is gone. Sister Jenny, how many times the Lord say, or the devil say, you might as well just stop. Don't worry about it. You'll never see it. But you know what my God likes? Consistency. Faithfulness. Keep praying. God, if I didn't see my loved ones in this church house here tonight, I've got lost loved ones that need saved. I got a mother-in-law that if God doesn't move in a great way, will not be here in a few years, and she's 58 years old because sin has absolutely destroyed her body. But God gave me an opportunity back at Christmas time for about 40 minutes in my car from Wilmington to Pleasant Plain, Brother Ed, and she got preached to. Amen. I don't get that opportunity very much, but she opened the door and I busted it wide open. And she said, I know I'm not right, Kelly. I miss the spirit that I used to feel in my heart. I miss when I used to sing. She used to sing the old song, I feel like running my last mile home. Anybody been in Pentecostal church has heard that one a thousand times. She'd sing it and dance and shout under the spirit. And for the last 25 years, the enemy has absolutely destroyed her life. Physically, mentally, she's mentally is an absolute disaster. My wife carries a very, very heavy burden for her mother. I pray for her, Lord. I want to see her walk in this house of God and give her heart to the Lord. And guess what? She didn't walk in here tonight, but I'm believing for Sunday. And if she don't come here Sunday morning, I'll pray for the next service, right? And the next, and the next, and the next. Why, Brother Kelly? Because even though she seems like she is at rock bottom, I serve a God that knows exactly where she's at. Amen. When he says it's time for you to come up out of there, it makes no difference how long you've been in that situation and circumstance. When Jesus says you're coming out, you're coming out, my friend. And I feel like tonight could be that night for someone. Brother Kelly, I've been praying for this a long night, long time. Tonight could be your night. Amen. 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 Psalm 68, I'm going to close if you'll stand with us, says this. Let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. Amen. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Let God arise. Amen. Let God arise in our lives tonight. Lord, I thank you for your presence I felt here tonight. God, I feel like you want to raise somebody up. Amen. Take them out of that situation. Take them out of that circumstance. My father has a wonderful testimony. He said, I feel like I was in the 
bottom of the pit. I was raised in a preacher's home. I strayed from God. I'd done a lot of things wrong. Went to the military. Made a lot of mistakes. Got very deep in sin. Amen. He said, Brother Ed, I was in the bottom of the gutter. But I thank God in 1980 that he got right down in the bottom of the gutter with me. And he wrapped both of his loving arms around me, Brother Ron. And he pulled me up out of there and said, you're no longer what you used to be. You're no longer tied to that situation. You're no longer tied to that circumstance. When God speaks and you arise, you're not what you used to be. Amen. You're not what you used to be. He said, I make all things new. Jesus said when he comes into our life, he makes all things new. I've preached tonight, rising above your situation. And the reason that we can rise above our situation is because we're getting re- what we're getting ready to celebrate Sunday. Because He arose. Because He arose, you can rise up also. Amen. Because He said, I paid the price for it all, Brother Ed. And because I come out of here when He came out, Amen, He, he showed that there could be new life. Amen. That there could be a new opportunity. There could be a fresh start. What are you saying here tonight, Brother Kelly? I'm trying to get us into this altar. But somebody needs to understand, it doesn't matter how long you've been where you're at. God wants to call you out tonight. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until this weekend. You say, Brother Kelly, Easter's coming and I'll be back. We're not promised to be here Sunday. Amen. God could call your number tonight. And He wants to take, bring you up out of that situation. I don't know why, but somebody needs to know this here tonight. The things you're going through. Amen. It is important for us to realize where our help comes from. Many times if we're not careful, we'll knock on Peter, and I have as well, for sinking in the water. But when he started to sink, right away he knew where his help come from. Lord, save me. Amen. Amen. And Brother Joe, God, Jesus didn't stand there and say, I told you not to take your eyes off of me. He grabbed a hold of him and pulled him up. That's exactly what he wants to do here tonight. He could say to every one of us, I told you not to do that. But our God doesn't operate like that. He says, I love you anyhow. I gave my son for God so loved the world. That's you. That's me. That's every situation, every circumstance. He already paid for it at Calvary. Aren't you glad that tonight? Amen. Let's come to these altars. Singers, come. Amen. Let's, let's talk to the Lord here tonight. You got a situation, a circumstance? Take it to Him. Amen. These altars are open. Come, let's pray, church. Amen. Let's bring them to Him tonight. Say, Lord, I'm going to bring this situation to you. I'm going to leave it in your hands. I'm going to leave it in your hands and let you take it. Amen. Let's pray.
said it like this. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and then he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. a couple wonderful testimonies and was I see my aunt Linda she was in critical condition on Monday at Miami Valley Hospital they took her there because atrium wasn't you know quite sufficient to take care of her knees but she said I said I want you to put the service on in a room because I know what it's like to be in a hospital room and have a have a child in ICU and I know what it's like when the Spirit of the Lord enters that room in a great way it's always there but it just moves in a wave. And I said, make sure her phone gets on. She can watch this as we pray for her. And her granddaughter was there, put the phone on. And she said, man, the presence of God came into my room here at Miami Valley Hospital. And since that moment, the numbers begin to go the right direction. Ever since then, she had another treatment today. And that's kind of what put her in reverse last time was that treatment. And they gave her a treatment today. And so far, everything has just went as it should go and so they're uh is it her that's going to step down because there's two of them one's in Kettering I've been to these hospitals okay it's her and yeah and they said we may take her out of that a couple steps down uh into a regular room so we're going to believe she's going to get out of there very soon and God's just going to keep on moving so we thank the Lord for that I sought the Lord he heard any answer now I always hear these songs and want to make sure that they're correct you know scripturally doctrinally and I thought well I saw the Lord and he heard the answer but sometimes he doesn't answer the way we want him to answer so it's not saying I saw the Lord and he gave me everything I wanted every single time I saw the Lord and he answered some days he most times I, I'm in his will and I feel like he answers but every now and then he said okay we're gonna go down this way and as I found out that as long as I go with him I'm okay he answered it always wasn't my will <laughs> Uh, but, but it's His will. And at the end of the day, I'd rather be in His will than anywhere else. So I thank the Lord for this song. And I can sing that now because you know me. I just got to process these things through and make sure everything is lining up with the Word of God. But I saw Him. He heard me. He answered. I, I, I thank God that He'll hear us when we cry. And that He'll hear us when we call out and pray to Him. Man, that blessed me tonight. Thank you, Brother Kelly, for the Word of the Lord tonight. It was encouraging to me. Amen. And I thank the Lord for the testimonies that He just continues to do. And He's going to do more and, and come Sunday morning, uh, 9 o'clock as, as usual, 11.15. And we're excited what the Lord's going to do. And uh, be here, invite somebody to come. And we'll preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, buried, resurrected. And we'll preach on what the Lord can do in you when He makes you a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your uncle... We've been praying for my great uncle, and he was in a car wreck. He's 89, and uh, believe it or not, still not saved. Was my grandfather's brother, came from a, a, a family, but he's in intensive care, right, Dad? JB is. And we want to pray that the Lord gets a hold of his heart and uh, just touches him. So as we're dismissed, remember him tonight as we pray. Do what? Oh, amen. Father, we thank you tonight for the service. We thank you that we rise above, God. Uh, with the help of the Lord, God, you have took, taken us out of the gutter. You've set us up on a firm foundation. 
And we thank you for that. Now, Lord, we pray blessing on your people. Be with my uncle, great uncle. God, I pray you're going to save him. You're going to help him, number one, get a hold of his heart, Jesus. He don't have much time left on this earth. So, Lord, come to him and, Lord, save his heart today, God. I pray, Lord, for Brother Nate's back. You bring healing to it tonight, God. Give him a miracle, God. Uh, And, Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do, Lord, as we thank God for this wonderful Passion Week. We get to celebrate a resurrected Savior. Be alive in your people, God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight.